Hello and welcome to Kuton Crafts. Today I'm going to show you how to make these Amish Folded Star Hot Pads, or pot holders if you'd prefer. This is a great little project to use up some fabrics in your fabric stash. These are the supplies that you need. So let's get the tutorial started. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is take a square piece of scrap fabric and I'm going to mark my pattern out on this uh, and I'm going to sew all the pieces to this. So this is going to be our foundation. What I'm going to do is, working on the wrong side here, I'm going to fold this in half diagonally. And I'm just going to finger press all this all throughout because I don't have an iron. And you really don't need an iron for this. But if you'd like to press this, by all means, go ahead and do that. And then, so I've got it folded into diagonal like that. I'm going to take each one of these points and bring those up to each other and finger press this side right there. So we got a line right there, one right there, and then this along this fold here, I'm going to bring it up to this fold that we just folded here. And you will see more what this looks like when I unfold it and draw these lines on here. All right, so we got that done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mark this so you can see these lines. You should be able to see them just fine if you press this. All right, so we have all of our lines here. Now what you're gonna do is take a ruler on each of these lines you want to make a mark at one and a half inches and then three quarters of an inch up from that, three quarters of an inch up again, and again three quarters of an inch up. So you have this business right there. So we are done marking out our pattern so we can set this aside. Next you want to choose your fabrics that you want to use to make your star. And I chose to use a uh, gradiated gradient of blue for this one. And I already went ahead and cut out my squares for this. For the inside, you will need five three inch squares. I think these are three inch squares. Let me measure them real quick. Yes, three inch squares, and you will need five of these. Uh, next color, and you want a little bit of. Um, difference in value and shade of each of these and that'll make your star stand out a little bit better. For the second row we have got eight pieces of or eight squares that are three and a half inches and eight of those. Next color again we have eight and those are four inches square and last will be the outside color which will be the dominant color. Again we have eight of those and those are four and a half inches. Now, before we start sewing, I'm going to take our center piece here. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. We want a background between our four points for the center star. And the reason being is because you will be able to see this piece of fabric through. And we don't want to see our background because surely you're going to use a piece of scrap fabric and it's not going to be pretty and it's not going to go with the star that you're doing. What you're going to want to do is take your square of fabric and you're going to line up. You want your right side out when you do this. You want to line up this raw edge right here. And again, I'm going to finger press this because I don't own an iron. I should probably get one of those, but all right. So now we got it folded in half. Now, right here is our uh, crease. You want to fold it up so it's in quarters and this seam right here or this uh, crease right here you want to take this folded edge and bring it straight up so you have all of your raw edges along this top finger press that do the same side the same way and finger press that and you want to make sure that you have a tiny little opening down here 
on your point. You don't want an exact point because when we go to quilt this, it's going to make it extremely difficult to quilt it. So you want just a slight little opening like that. And you want to do this with all of your pieces, all however many squares it is, 24, 29 squares of fabric. I take that back, except for the center, so 28 squares. Now for the very center square that's going to be in behind the points, you want to fold this diagonally and diagonally again. That way you know where the center is. So now that we found the center of our little background square there, you're going to take your point here and you just want to line it up so the point is in the center and so all your raw edges line up on the outside and you want to sew this down it doesn't matter what stitch length you use uh, but you do want to maintain a quarter of an inch seam and i'm using white thread here just so you can see it a little better but you would want to use a coordinating thread color thread then you want to take your next point and lay that right on top. And if it works better for you, uh, you can certainly pin or pre-sew these points if you so choose. I just find it's more trouble than it's worth and you don't really need to do that. So again, you want this point right there in the center and you want these two edges to line up. You also want your raw edges right here to line up and sew with a rough quarter inch seam. And you want to go all the way around. There is our last square on there. Don't cut your fabric, only cut your thread. Get rid of these uh, thread ends. And now what you're going to do is take your pattern here and we're going to sew this down on top. And what you're going to do is you're going to line up this raw edge with your one and a half inch mark on your pattern or your backing fabric. It's not really a backing fabric, it's just the fabric that you're gonna sew all these pieces down to. And you wanna make sure that it is lined up with all of your marks. You also want to make sure that this line right here follows these lines right here to make sure that you're not gonna end up with a crooked star so make sure that all lines up. You want to make sure that these points right here line up with these lines right here. And once everything looks good, you want to sew this down. All right, so now we have that. We're going to take our next color, which is going to be the three and a half inch square. And again, you're going to make your point. What you're going to do, I'm going to do it from this side so you guys can see is you are going to line this raw edge up with the point here or the line that you made here which will be the two and a quarter inch line and you want to make sure that these folds right here line up with that line as well but you also want to make sure that your point here lines up with the gap of your point below so this right here is exactly how you want it. Now that we have our four points on, we can go ahead and put our second layer of points on the same row. And what you're going to do is they're going to go on each of these open corners here. So again, where your mark is, line up your point here, line up the point down here, And you're just going to stitch it on and go all the way around with the other four points. Just 
like we did before with the other four points. And there it is with all eight points on that second round. Now you're just going to do the next two rows exactly the same way using your four inch because this is the third row we're going to go up to the next size square which will be the four inch square. Again make your point. But on these next two rows you're going to follow and do the same as you did on this row here. So you're going to start with placing your next point on this point that's underneath. All right, so once you get your all your points done, this is exactly what it will look like. And this is really thick and really heavy, so make sure that you are, use, you are using a sturdy enough um, sewing machine needle to be able to go through all these layers because you're going to be going through at least eight layers at times. Um, so anyway, now we need to trim this down to make it a circle. So you want to find anything that you have laying around the house that is a circle, roughly between seven and seven and a half inches. If you have a compass, great, use it. I don't, so I'm going to be using this lid, and this lid happens to be seven and a quarter inches. I'm going to center this on here. I'm going to trace around this with a marker of some sort or a pencil or a piece of chalk or something that you can see. And I'm going to sew on this line that I just drew. And now it's time to layer up our pot holder. I have got a piece of, first off, my backing fabric. Just choose a piece of fabric that will fit. Next to you, this is strictly optional because this pot holder is so thick on its own, you don't need this. However, I like to use it anyway. And what this is, is this is Insulbrite batting that has a thin layer of mylar in the center of it. And it is heat resistant. It is not heat proof, just heat resistant. And this really works well for pot holders. So uh, you can find this at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Hancock, any place that sells fabric usually sells this. If not, you can buy it online and it's super cheap. It's only like $2 a yard. And then you want to take your pot holder and layer that right up on top. So we've got our top, Insulbrite, backing fabric. Now I have changed out my thread to a matching color for the top. Now you're not going to get a thread that matches all of these, so I just chose a random blue. And the bobbin thread I changed to match my backing fabric, which happens to be black. Now we are going to quilt this. And to quilt this, it's super easy. All you're going to do is follow in between these folds right here. And you're going to start up here on one side and work all the way through, all the way down to the other side. Now you want to go slow with this because you don't want to catch either side of this because you want the line, the stitching line, to be invisible. So just take your time with this. And I find it helps to spread these out. It's okay because once it's all quilted, it's going to go back together. But you want to stitch right in between those two folds. All right, so we've got this all quilted now. And you can see how all these nice points lay down flat now. And now it is time to add the binding. Now you could trim this right now around that seam that you sewed around or the line or whatever you have there. But I'm going to attach my binding first. And for my binding, I'm going to use the same fabric that I used for the backing. And I cut it into a two inch strip on the bias. And I'm just going to fold this in half. Again, you can finger press this or press it with an iron if you so choose. But I'm going to fold this in half as I sew it. And it doesn't matter where you start your binding. You can start it anywhere around the edge. You just want to put it on and using a quarter inch seam, sew this around. And you want to be careful because you're going around in a circle and if you pull this tight 
you're going to end up with a bunch of wrinkles around the edge and you don't want that so you want to do this loose and let the machine just kind of do its thing and feed in the fabric as it so chooses all right so i've got the binding done and i have my two tails here and to connect these you could if you wanted to and wanted to fuss with it you know put these together so a quarter inch seam along there and secure it that way it's that's too much work for me so what i'm going to do is take one of my tails and i'm just going to roughly lay it down you could pin this again if you wanted to you just kind of want to get it in a general position you want to take your other tail and fold over a quarter of an inch seam allowance and because this is only a pot holder and it's not you know a quilt or a showpiece or anything like that i'm not actually going to secure these two pieces together I'm just going to lay them over top of each other with that quarter inch seam folded down. So that way when we turn this edge, it'll look like it's seamed, but it really isn't. And because it's such a small binding, it really isn't going to matter. But like I said, if you want to connect these two um, and sew them right sides together and do it the proper way, more power to you. But it's too much work for me, so I'm not going to do it. All right, and all you gotta wanna do to trim this is use a good pair of fabric scissors, and you wanna trim this about a quarter of an inch from where you sewed your binding on. So get in there, and because you are cutting through 10 and 12 now layers of fabric, this takes a little bit of work. If you have a rotary cutter that will handle this much fabric, by all means, use it. And once you get all that cut off, this is what you will have. And then what you want to do is, that's where I seamed that, or didn't, I should say, fold your binding over and around, and from the back side, is now where you'll take a needle and thread and carefully sew this binding down by hand. And while you are sewing the binding down by hand, if you would like to attach a loop, you most certainly can. All I did was take a scrap piece of my backing fabric, which is also my binding fabric. It is an inch and a half wide and it is cut on the bias and you just want to take your two raw edges and fold them into the center like that and then fold this in half and all I did was a line of top stitching on either side of that to hold it down and you get yourself a little loop that looks like that. Fold it like so and stick it into the back of or underneath your binding as you are hand sewing it. And there you go, that is how I made the Amish Folded Star Quilted Hot Pads, or pot holders if you'd like to call them that. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.